And good morning, everyone. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Civil 3D uh, Project Network Control Sheet, the CTL SRD, and using that with the Sheet Set Manager. Now, using the Sheet Set Manager and setting up the CTL SRD sheet is a is a critical skill. It's it's not complicated, but it is a critical skill that you all need to use and know. And with that being said, I'll get started on the webinar. One of the first things we do, as with uh, most of our sheet setups, we need to create a CTL SRD sheet. We have a template set up. If you use the Create File Utility, you can create the CTL SRD sheet, and it'll have uh, what you'll find is that it'll have some sheet layouts in it. The CTL SRD DWT, which is a template, is the only design survey template with layout tabs. Those layout tabs can be duplicated within the file. You can make multiple sheets if needed. All, some, or one layout can be used as needed and unused layouts can be deleted. They, they should be deleted. In this webinar, I'm going to be going back and forth between the PowerPoint and live, so if you'll please bear with me, I'll go ahead and start that. This is a Civil 3D 2014, and if I go over to my tool space, you'll see it is docked over on the left side. The properties is right here. I keep it docked over on the right side uh, just for functionality purposes. Going to the FDOT tab on the ribbon, I'm going to go to the create file right here, open it up and create a CTL SRD sheet. Under the roadway discipline you'll find survey design files and the survey project network control sheets are right here. If we create the file, once created, you can open the file by pressing the open file button. I'll go ahead and close this. I want to show you a little bit about the CTL SRD sheet. We have model space as normal, but we have three tabs. We have the CTL DAT tab, the CTL detail tab and the CTL tab layout. In the in the in the data tab, you might recognize this sheet. It has a viewport at the top as a place for station, centerline station, northern easting, and scale factor for control, horizontal and vertical control. And then details can be put down inside. Of course, this is a um, embedded spreadsheet so once you actually click in it you have functionality if I go into any one particular field notice at the top up here the layout tools becomes active and you can use it like a spreadsheet the detail layout tab is strictly for drawing it has a viewport also a large viewport and then the tab sheet can be used just for data. Sheet Set Manager will populate the sheet title blocks and all the layout tabs. So the Sheet Set Manager is a Civil 3D tool used in part to populate the sheet title blocks. It uses a DST file which is a um, template in itself strictly for the sheet set manager. It is found under the data folder within your project directory. Let me show you. If I go to my project directory, in this case, this is a test project right here. Uh, it has all the folders for the disciplines. One of the folders is data right here. And what you'll find are the sheet set templates architectural, geologist, landscape architect, the master sheet set template. We have one for right of way and then of course the one we'll be using today is FDOT surveying. 
Okay, let me go back to the PowerPoint. The Sheet Set Manager is opened from the tool space under the Palettes drop down. Once opened, you'll need to set, you'll need to start a new sheet set to start to, and start to create Sheet Set Wizard. The wizard will lead you through setting up your DST file in the surveying ENG folder. You need to go get here. What I'm showing here is you will go and you'll actually find the surveying DST file. Once you find it, you'll create your uh, sheet set name. In this case, I'll use CTLSRD and then you'll need to navigate to the survey ENG data folder in order to save the sheet set template that's going to be used for your project, for your surveying project. And once that is created, you can set up the properties within the sheet set. I'm going to create the CTLSRD sheet. Create it, open it, close. Then to the Home tab and open up the Sheet Set Manager. And this is where I want to be. Once I've opened it and it's a brand new project, you'll see the Open button, say New Sheet Set. The wizard will open, say Next. You want to make sure you go navigate to your project. In this case, it's, eight, it's the 88881 project. Go to the data folder. Choose the FDOT serving, surveying DST and say open. Next in the wizard will lead you to the name of the new sheet set. This is going to be CTLSRD. CTLSRD. I want to make sure that I'm in the right folder in the project. It's under surveying the ENG data folder. Open. And at this point, I can go ahead and create it, but I do have a possibility I can go ahead and start the sheet set properties. And I wanted to show you this. It's the reason I came back to this wizard. Um, you do not necessarily have to be in the sheet, in the CTLSRD sheet, or any sheet for that matter, to run the sheet set properties. It actually is working directly with the sheet set template that I just created under the data, under the survey folder, right here. So I am in the sheet. I can uh, populate properties at this point. So if you, if you go to the properties, you'll see where it's going to be created, which is under the ENG data folder. You got a description for it. Uh, the little drop down, the pull down for the sheet is over on the left side, which is a little different. So you want to be aware of that. You can, you can go ahead and put in some data into this at this point. Put in a county of Leon, call this CO for central office. Six oh five Suwanee. Street. I just wanted to put some data in and show you how this works. Uh, you can put a project description in, and if you go on down to the bottom, uh, there's a place actually for the road number. I'll just make up a road number name and say OK. So. What I've done is I have I've gone, I've pre-set up some data into the sheet set properties during the wizard itself. If I hit next, 
it'll get it'll let me preview and confirm what I'm setting up. So I'm setting up a CTLSRD. Uh, it'll set up some subsets called roadway plans right up here. Utility work and then also uh, if you're doing right-of-way mapping we have a subset for that. I can preview some of the data that I put in there. If I say finish now it's going to create the CTLSRD DST file under my ENG data folder under survey. At this point I could uh, go here and right click and say properties and it'll lead me right back to that same properties box. Okay. So that's where we left off in the PowerPoint was the properties is right clicking and showing properties. Uh, as I did just a moment ago, you can set the county, the district, the professional of record, project description, road number. If you want to fill out any information, anything you need, need to know and press OK. And of course, then it creates the CTLSRD DST file in the ENG data folder under survey. Once you have uh, started, you've actually created that DST, you can import the layouts from your CTL sheet into the sheet set manager. So I'm going to close this and if you right quick right click on the roadway plans right here and say import layout as sheet you'll need to navigate to the drawing that has the layouts. In that case, in this situation, it's the one I have open, so I'll browse to the drawings. Under survey, I have CTLSRD02 open, so I'll choose that one. I can choose to import any one of the layouts or all of the layouts. In this case, I'll go ahead and import all three layouts. and it'll put them under roadway plans. Now it's critical that you put these under the roadway plans for the purposes. The subsets have to be populated properly in order for sheet set organizer to work properly. So you see here in the PowerPoint I have shown the subsets and how you import them, importing them under the roadway plans. Note that the sheet titles and the drawing layout names are the same. Also note that the sheet number itself has not been populated. So one of the things we have to do is we need to set up the sheet names and we need to populate the sheet number and we do that through the sheet set manager. Using the rename and renumber renumbers the sheet and title block. Once you have renumbered it, you can go into the properties of the individual sheets and do any uh, revisions or changes or populating that you need to do right there. In order to do that, all you need to do is right click on the title sheet and hit the rename and renumber. So, let me do that. Right click on the title block, hit rename and renumber. In this case, an approved sheet set title number, sheet number for surveying project network control sheets is CTL dash and then the sheet number. So I'll use sheet I'll sheet use for the first tab sheet number one. For the sheet title, I'm going to call it reference points horizontal. 
and vertical control. In some cases, you may not want to have the sheet title and the prefix number added uh, along with the layout name, but for, the, for this particular sheet, for the CTLSRD sheet, I do recommend that you leave the sheet title checked and the prefix with sheet number checked, which will, which what happens when I, ta when, I, when I take this, when I uncheck the prefix with sheet title block, it will take the sheet title number off of it. So this is just in the layout name. If I say next, I'll go to the next sheet. In this case, it'll be CT, CTL2. I'm going to call this one. Reference points. Horizontal. Vertical. Control. Next for the third layout, CTL dash three. Again, ref, reference points, horizontal and vertical control. Once those are set up, I'll say OK and note it changed the name of the sheets. It also, down here, changed the names of the layouts. Right here. So reviewing, we go through the Sheet Set Manager. We say rename and renumber the sheet. We give it a sheet title. We rename and layout the uh, layout to match. Give it the sheet title, the prefix number, and the sheet number, all three sheets. And what will happen is it will actually get put directly into the title block. I'm going to dock this. Might be the easiest way to do this and look at this right here. So what you see is. Once I regenerate, you'll see that the sheet number is set up. For each sheet, the information I entered is all in the title block. And from there, we can do uh, go in and do uh, edits directly on the sheets themselves or in the title block. Uh, note that in previous versions of Civil 3D, down here in the layout was properties, but that's no longer in that. I think maybe Civil 3D, uh, Autodesk decided that was confusing. So now if you want to change any properties, you need to do it up in the Sheet Set Manager in, under the sheets themselves. So I could go in at this point, make any cheat changes. I could, cha I could change the sheet number, add anything to this, and again, any information that I need to do, need to change. Is right here in the sheet properties. Uh, also note that in the sheet properties you have the same exact rename layout to match. So it has the same functionality as the uh, as the wizard or uh, setting up the properties to begin with. Now there's more things we can do. We can add another sheet to the subset if we need to do so. The current drawing, uh, all we do is we go into the current drawing, right click on any layout and choose move or copy. We can pick the appropriate layout, check the create copy box and select OK. The new layout's created. It'll be, it'll be created where you show it in the, uh, in, in the create dialog box. And if you want to move it, you need to drag it. You can drag it and drop it. So before the new layout can be imported as a sheet, you have to save the drawing. Once you save it, you can import those sheets, put them in order, renumber, rename. I'll give you an example. Let's say we want to use the, the drawing sheet, the CTL um, 
detail sheet and I want to make a copy of it because we're going to have extra drawings in that area. So let's say I go in, I go move or copy. It's going to move or copy that sheet to right ahead of wherever I select it. So let me put it at the end just to show you how that works. I'll say OK. Let's see. So now what you'll see is I have, and I need to move these over, I actually have the CTL reference point, a new sheet, here at the end. I can pick it up and drag and drop it over here. Okay. I'm gonna, in this case, I'm going to copy it so I'll have multiple ones. If I put it right here, say OK. If I hit create copy, it'll actually create the copy. So you see there's there's multiple things you can do. If you want it at the end, you can drag it there. Uh, in this case, I probably want to rename it. But remember, as I said, you can't import this into the layouts until you've saved it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. I'm going to import layout as a sheet. In this case, I'm going to pick just the last one. Say import is checked. <clears throat> and what you see now is in the sheet set manager, I have some sheets that need to be reordered and renumbered. In this case, I'm going to drag it back over to this spot, regenerate. And renumber my sheets. So if I rename and renumber, this becomes sheet four. Say OK. The original sheet two becomes three. Say OK. And then the copied version that I put in there. I'll rename and renumber and call that CT, uh, CTL-2 and remove the copy reference. Say OK. So now what you up oh, and one more thing I need to do is uh, remove the extra CTL-2. right here and say okay so now all my sheets are renamed renumbered anything that's not being used you need to delete uh, it's important to use the correct subset as I said in order for the sheet set organizer tool to be used and uh, any unused subsets uh, like right away map utility work for highway contractor they can also be deleted if you're interested in the link to create files and create projects video, you'll find it right here. So in this case, I'm going to go in here and show you you can delete these subsets. And actually, I need to do that somewhere else. So I'll do that later. Um, <clears throat> I want to show you how to. Um, generate a report. So to generate an alignment report uh, showing the stations and offsets for horizontal and vertical control points, the alignment needs to be inserted into the CTLSRD file. You, you want to switch to model, fa uh, model space and insert the alignment and insert any control points that you want to show in your report. Go into model space. I go into insert up at the top. I can insert Atlantic 7L. If you remember from previous 
webinars. I have a uh, baseline one XML. I'm going to import that one. Say OK. And I'll end up with just the alignment. Right now it doesn't have any kind of style and it's not, not necessary at this point. If I want to insert any points, any survey points, I'll go down to the survey tab. I'll open my uh, survey project. If I double click on it, it'll be in read only mode, which is fine. And in this case, I'm going to insert the control points from zone 5. So in order to run the reports, we want to do a little bit of a setup first. So if I go to my tool space, if you look on the home page, if you don't have your tool box already open, you can open it right here. So you turn it on, turn it off. We'll show the toolbox tab down in the tool space. Using this icon right here, if I hover over it just right, it should show. Press this button to edit the report settings. So if I go into uh, owner, for instance, I could put the company name. In this case, I've got FDOT already filled out. Uh, the address. 605 Swanee Street, city and state, of course. And then under points, you've got coordinates, elevations. You've got alignments also you can set up. If I say OK, it will remember those settings. So to, to generate an alignment report, we're going to go into the Tool Space Toolbox tab and expand the Reports Manager to show the alignment. And if you double click on it, you can get an alignment report on the station and curve. You want to, in the XML uh, report, you want uh, to uncheck everything but the alignments. You want to press OK and give it a name for your alignment report. In this case, we use alignment.txt. For the control point report, you want to do something similar. You want to go under points and use station offset to points. And in the create report dialog box, you can save it as a control.txt. So um, under my report manager, I'm going to go to alignment. As I said in the PowerPoint, if you double click on the station and curve, make sure you uncheck everything except the alignments. Just leave everything under alignments checked. Uncheck everything else. And you actually do have uh, specific then XML, XML versions you can change to if you need to. 1.2 is the latest. Say so, OK. I'm going to call this the align text. Align. Hit save. Under, make sure you put it under your project directory under the survey folder. Okay. It's going to generate a report and it will actually open and you have your alignment description. You have your curve data, your tangent data. So it's, it's, it's very similar to describing an alignment with Geopack or Casey. For a offset points report, I'm going to go to points, double click on the station and offset to points, Make sure I save it uh, under my project directory, under survey, and in this case I'm going to call it control and save it as a txt file right here and say save and hit create report and it'll also open up a report that shows the point, the station offset, elevation, and description of each point. 
And from there, what we need to do is draw in our viewports. We can, let me go back to this one more time. We can, uh, you want to take advantage of the viewports and the layouts. Uh, any additional survey data can be inserted into the drawing. You can switch to the desired layout. You have to unlock the viewport, uh, XREF a file, or you can draw directly in the viewport, and then set the viewport scale, and you, then you want to lock the viewport. And of course, at the end, as always in Civil 3D, you want to save. So let me give you a quick example of that. In this case, I have the alignment in, but what I want to do is I want to I want to X ref in a little bit more. So I'm gonna, I'll just go ahead and just do a um, X ref. I'll X ref the original alignment in, so you'll see the stations and uh, <clears throat> tick marks. Is that okay? So in this case, I have a uh, alignment in, and I have some points I can set up uh, by drawing lines to them, uh, putting, uh, going ahead and putting any kind of angle and distance to the points. I would add monuments, uh, reference lines, that kind of stuff. If I go down to uh, one of my layouts, let's, let's go to one of the, the larger layouts. You want to uh, unlock the viewport. So once you, right here under display locked, it says yes, you want to change that to no. Once you've changed it no, if you double click inside the viewport, you can actually zoom in, zoom out, set your scale. So what I'll do is I down here, I'll set my scale to 50. Got that. So I can move it around to any way I need it. Once you have your scale set and your X ref in the position you want it, it's a good idea to go back in and lock it this viewport. I'm going to go back over to display locked right here. Say yes. Now when I zoom in, even <clears throat> when I'm drawing in the viewport, it will not change inside. The scale will remain the same. And the last thing you want to do, you want to make sure you save it. So. Go up to your save button, hit it, do save, and your viewport's ready to draw in. So that is pretty much the skills you need to know to set up the sheet set manager and to set up your layout tabs and your viewports. And that concludes my webinar.